Good morning. What a privilege to be meeting with you again and around the word, especially around the word. It's, it's the stuff that changes our lives when we dig into the word and we allow the word to form our perceptions, to form our outlook on life. I said last week, and I, I want to reiterate it again, um, without faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so I want to talk to you this morning again on the subject of growing faith or growing my faith. It's absolutely essential that I understand that I, I don't stagnate. I don't accept Jesus Christ as Savior into my life. And now I wait for the second coming. I wait for a rapture. I wait for heaven. I accept Jesus Christ into my life. And now he, he calls me and invites me into a, a union with him, a walk with him. And so I want to share with you again this morning and on growing my faith. That's the most important thing. And I want to share some uh, the vital steps on growing my faith. And I, I take the life of Abraham. In, in Romans, Abraham is called the father of our faith. And, and it's crucial to see why he's called the father of our faith, because he had a journey with God. It wasn't an instantaneous thing. For him, it was a journey as well as it would be a journey for us. And so I want to start with uh, Genesis chapter 12 and talk to you Step number one, one of the most vital things in my life is to understand that I live by promises. I receive promises from God. When he speaks to me, he adjusts my thinking. He aligns my thinking with heaven. And so uh, he says in, in uh, Genesis chapter 12, he says, the Lord said unto Abraham, get out of your country, out from your family, out from your father's house. In other words, break ties with your siblings, with your family. Go to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make you a blessing to many nations. What a promise. But together with a the promise, there's, a, there's a, a step of obedience. Leave your father's house. In other words, leave your family. I want to be your family. I want to be your father. Um, leave your siblings. Abraham disobeys on both accounts. <laughs> he takes his father, Terah, with him. And, and um, we, we see that he has to stay in one specific place until his father passed away. And so God is not afraid to show us the, the failures of, of his disciples. The failures of those that he calls the father of faith. And so you and I need to understand that in our walk with him, there are going to be moments where I will miss him, where I will disobey him. The promise remains. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and I will bless those that bless you. And so Abraham had to leave to a place. Where would he go? He's walking behind God. He's walking after God. And you know what? In my own life, there were moments that I had not a clue. I did not have a clue where God was leading with my life. And Pat and I often received guidance from the Lord, often received the promise from the Lord. And the promise was greater than our own uh, perceptions, than our own history. Because God's stretching us. And so the first thing that you and I need to take hold of is a promise from God. And that's why I read the Bible every day. That's why I, I get quiet before the Lord. I take the word and I, and I say, Lord, speak to me. And invariably, when he speaks to me, he's going to give me a promise. Stretching my faith again, stretching my capacity. Leading me away from the things that are familiar. Leading me away from my comfort zones. The second step, the second vital step in, in, in leading me to a growing faith and allowing me to grow my faith is cutting covenant. I will explain the whole thing to you. In Genesis 15, 7, the Lord said to him, I am the Lord that brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans 
to give you this land to inherit it. Now Abraham has, has moved into the land that, that God promised him to move into. And, and uh, now the, the Lord is taking him a step further. He says, he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit this land? He's just honest. How will I know that, that your word be, will become true in my life? How will I know that the promise you gave me will even be a, a, a realistic? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He took him unto him all these animals and divided them in halves, placing them opposite, placing the, the, the parts opposite each other. But the birds he divided not, <laughs> they're too small. So what is happening? I, I will show you a picture of the figure eight covenant ritual. So the two parts of the animals are lying opposite each other. And then God does an amazing thing. He stations Abraham and himself on opposite sides of each other. And then the requirement for cutting covenant is that I will walk in a figure eight through these two body parts that are lying aside from each other. And then the other person will walk in a figure eight through these body parts. And then we will say to each other, I will first say, if I made the first move, if I did the first steps, I will say to you, I will say, you can do to me what we have done to these animals if I do not keep my covenant with you. You need to understand, if I go and buy a car, if I buy a house or I buy a stand, these days we get forms from the bank and we have to complete about 3,000 different forms, signing each page as if that will carry weight. But that's the way we, we do covenant or contract these days. In the days of Moses, this was serious stuff. You see now... If I don't pay you, I signed 300 pages, but I don't pay you for some other reason. All you can do to me is take me to court and then maybe take the thing back. Or, you know, laws have changed so much, but really my life is not in jeopardy. But in those days, I'm saying to you what we've done to this animal, cutting it asunder, walking in between it. What have we done to this? You can do to me if I don't keep my covenant. In other words, <laughs> death is looming large. And I, I want you to understand that I don't break a covenant like that. Now, now something absolutely awesome happens. When God and Abraham took stations opposite sides of each other, God put Abraham in a deep sleep. And it says, and a, a, a fiery furnace moved in between the animals. Beloved, you, need, you and I need to understand, if God makes a covenant with me, I am not capable of keeping myself true to this covenant. I am too weak. My faith is too weak. My commitment is too weak. And God knows that. So what God does is what he did with Adam when he created Eve. He put Abraham in a deep sleep. And God himself completed the ritual of the figure eight of the covenant. God is saying, even if you struggle to keep this covenant with me, I will keep it for you. This is what Calvary is all about. See, I don't need to, to, to help Jesus. I, I, I don't need to, you know, uh, you know, hold out my hand so that they can at least put one nail through my hand so I can associate and identify with the suffering of Jesus. He did it all by himself. You see, cutting the covenant is, 
is one of the most important things that God looks at my weakness. God looks at my vulnerability and my gullibility. And God says, I will do it because I love you. And I, and I, I want to be in this covenant. I want to make a divine contract with you and I want to keep it. Isn't that beautiful? The third component, the first step, the third step of this covenant is my confession. In Genesis 17, we read, um, And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the Almighty. And he uses a word that we have not yet seen in the Bible. He uses the word El Shaddai. I am the Almighty. El Shaddai could also mean the all-sufficient one. I will explain it to you now. Then the Lord says to Abraham, uh, he says, walk face to face with me. We're looking at each other and you shall become complete. What some translations say, you will be perfect. But the, the Hebrew word conveys the message of completeness, fullness. And I will make my covenant between you and me. And I will multiply you exceedingly. Because my name is El Shaddai. I will not only give you a covenant. I will multiply you exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face. And God talked with him saying, For behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name be called Abraham any longer. For from now on your name shall be Abraham. Father of many nations, I have made you. It's, it's something mind-blowing. You see, here's a new revelation of God. In God's uh, giving Abraham a promise, cutting covenant with Abraham, and, 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 and inviting Abraham to a new level of faith. First of all, God reveals himself by a new name. By a new reputation. El Shaddai. Shaddai is a word borrowed from uh, one of the Canaanite nations. It refers to a, a, a multi-breasted figurine. A goddess of the time. She had six breasts and six arms. Two breasts are enough if we could speak humanly. If you have... A woman with six breasts, she doesn't only have enough milk, she has far more than enough. She has abundant milk. And this is the message that God wants to convey to Abraham. He wants to convey to you and me. I am more than enough. I will not only meet your needs. But I could do so much more. I want to read to you some scriptures. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Let me just read it to you. This is absolutely amazing. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. He says to, Paul writes and he says to the church. He says, God is able to make every grace overflow to you so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. God is able to make every grace over overflow to you so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. That's abundance. In John 10, 10, Jesus tells the disciples, uh, the enemy comes to steal, to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. Now this abundant life is Zoe life. You see, there are two kinds of life. It's bios. It's the life in Greek. It's the life, the human life. Beep, 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 beep. The heart monitor goes off showing, indicating that my heart's still beating. That's bios. But, but <laughs> Paul uses a second word and Jesus uses a second word and he talks about life abundantly and he talks about Zoe. It's from the Greek mythology, refers to life of the gods. It's, a, it's an above quality of life. 
It's far more abundant than just breathing, than just having a heartbeat. And then he says in Ephesians 3.20, let's just read this together. Ephesians 3.20, he says the following. He says, Now unto him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think. This is what El Shaddai is all about. This is the, the revelation that, that faces Abraham. And then God does a new thing. He gives, his, he gives him a new name. In the light of the revelation of God's new name, he gives unto his son, Abraham, a new name. A child's name is always prophetic. And I want to say to you, be careful what name you place on your child's future. Be careful what you name your child. You see, Abram means exalted father. That was his name. But now God is dealing, take, uh, taking him into a new step of faith, new level of faith. And so God gives him a new confession, a new name, a new prophetic utterance. Abraham, not just the exalted father, but father of many. You see, Romans 4, 17 says, and he quotes from the scripture. He says, as it is written, I've made you a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God, who raises the dead and calls those things that are not as if they already were. Wow. Paul sees something, he says, God calls those things that are not is as if they already were. And so in, in, in giving Abraham a new confession, God is saying to him, you say that you're a father of many in the light of the fact that you have no children. You see, my five senses don't determine the quality of my faith. My five senses perceive, I can see, it perceives a physical world around me. I can see, I can hear, taste, smell, uh, um, touch. But my five senses are limited. God's taking me into a, a, a playing field, into a new level of life. Abraham had no children walking down the street. Uh, sorry, sir, what's your name? I'm a father of many. Okay, where are your children? Not yet. You have seen well, you see, uh, Jeremiah prophesied, he says, you have seen well, Jeremiah 1.12, he says, God is alert and active, watching over his word to perform it. The money hasn't come in. We had a company promising us a new contract. The money hasn't come in. Yet I hold on to my confession. My child is not yet healed, but I hold on to my confession. And in this whole process of Abraham, Walking through a promise, a covenant, and now a confession, Isaac is born. And I want to say to you this morning, your Isaac will be born because God is helping you to grow your faith. And this word will assist you not to contemplate the physical world around you and your physical feelings. God wants to take you to a place where you contemplate El Shaddai. The one who is more than enough, who is taking me by the hand, making promises, and he is able to make this stuff real in my life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, wow, what a life you took Abraham into. Beyond being just a human being, he had such a touch from heaven that he could see things that he had not even dreamt of. Because your plan is to take us beyond the limitations of our world, the limitations of the media that the media put on us, the limitations that parents, that, 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 that maybe the school put on me as I was growing up, the limitations of my environment. Your desire is to take us so that we could live a life, a Zoe quality of life. Help us, my Father. Help this person that listened to me this morning. Maybe they're going through a hard time. Oh God, we heard so many of your children are struggling at the moment. 
Come this morning, take these simple words, your word, my Father, apply it to our hearts and stir a new level of faith in us in Jesus' name. Amen.